Hello everyone, Will here and welcome to the Learn to Code Academy. So in this particular video, what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be breaking down um, Win2D, I'm going to be breaking down how to create animations using Win2D and uh, we're going to see how I created a Dreamcast visualization for my last video um, using only UWP, Win2D and how you can take advantage of the um, of the API in order to create your own animations in 2D space. So without much further ado, let's get straight into the video. UWP Win2D, creating animations. So the architecture. Win2D has a neat way of passing information when it comes to animations. By utilizing the canvas animator control, we have access to a dynamic method of loading and animating images on screen via an update draw process. Down below you can find some information on the documentation. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now over here is uh, I've drawn out a simplified version of the um, thread consideration that you need to take into account when you're dealing with game looping uh, in, in, or should I say anything to do with the canvas animated control. It utilizes a game loop thread and, a U and the main UI thread in the way it works regardless if you're creating a game or visualization as it would the case with the project we're going to delve into later in the video. However, the way this kind of works in a general sense is that the UI thread is synchronized with the game loop thread and there are certain actions that cannot clash. For example, the control, being the animated canvas control, ensures that it does not raise any events on the game loop thread while the create resources is running on the UI thread. And what this basically means is that there's a particular method called create resources and you use this particular method um, so that you can at initializing stage of your canvas control you can load bitmaps you can load um, any kind of information to do with the graphics you want to render on the screen at that kind of initialization phase and then the draw function will take care of drawing it and the update function will of course update the whole process so there's a sort of synchronization between the two threads that are running the game loop thread and the UI thread. And there's some smart things you can do in order to really optimize this, this um, process. So without much further ado, let's actually delve into a little example. It's the Sega Dreamcast style concept that I came up with that I posted in my last video. It's a visualization animation and let's gonna let's kind of look at that example and see how I utilize the canvas animated control in order to realize the animation for that particular project okay so here we are in the code and now just quick disclaimer um, as I was trying to create this in a relatively short span of time I didn't really take the time to make everything as efficient as possible so you will see things that are uncommented and whatnot but I will try my best to guide you through the process as to what's actually going on and I think a good place to start might be the XAML You'll notice quickly, as I just kind of um, scroll up here, is that the XAML is quite minimalistic. It's only got the grid. I've got two rectangles, which play a little part in the animation, and they're both colored with white, uh, whereas one has like a black stroke, which doesn't really make much of a difference, but you'll see later on in the video why that is. <clears throat> and I have my canvas animated control here instantiated so um, one thing to note is that you will have to actually include the namespace which is here XML and S um, colon canvas and you gotta um, reference the namespace here in order for this to work so just hopping back to the C sharp code let's go first to the update function I think that's a good place to start or rather let's actually look at some of our initializations so first, in the fields, you're going to want to declare your control itself. So if we just go ahead and peek to the control, um, sorry, peek to the definition, if my right click will work. Visual Studio just taking a little while. Oops. Oh, goodness. That was great. Nonetheless, um, what you'll find is that um, once you define your create animated control, you can go ahead and start creating your um, events. So in this particular case, um, the events that have been created are the, let me quickly go ahead and see, the typed event handler for the create resources. You have draw, which is a typed event handler, which is for the draw update, or should I say the draw function, and you have the update function, which is another typed event handler. And I'll just go ahead to peek at the definition there, so you just have a look at it in the field level. Sorry, as my laptop isn't the fastest. So 
Okay, so what I did is this is actually referencing the canvas control at XAML that I defined. So I didn't actually bother to create another canvas control in code. It's already defined in the XAML. I'm just literally um, referencing that and giving it the... Um, I'm creating the event at code level. You could create the event itself at XAML level. That will 100% work. But I just decided to take it take the liberty of creating the actual event handler here in the code which does the same thing and you want to hook the uh, methods that are associated so accordingly respectively you have created animated resources animated draw and animated update and as you can tell by the name convention you load your animate your sorry your resources here this is for your drawing routine and this is for your update function now the way I, I decided to approach this Thinking about how, if you've ever seen a Sega Dreamcast booting up, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you can look at my last video that I uploaded. It's basically like an orb or a bouncing ball, essentially. A bouncing ball animation. And you have letters going up. And they kind of in, they kind of settle. And then you have a spiral animating in the middle. So I thought about this for a little while. And I, there was a way that I decided to go about this. And it's just, it's kind of a crude way of approaching the animation but what I decided to do was to kind of hard code these animation steps as I called them starting at zero and going up to a discrete number and for a set amount of steps or frames I would ease in and tween in the animation and then ease it out or interpolate it somewhat in between the keyframes as I would say <coughs> so for an example I decided between frame 0 and frame 10 here, I would only ever so slightly increment the X position of the um, circle by 1.2 floats. And for the Y position, which is this um, value that I've defined here, it goes by 1.1. So a main thing to notice is that you have your, you have your canvas, which is essentially your viewport, depending on the, the screen resolution, you know, what you can see on the screen. And one thing you have to notice is that when you when you draw anything on the screen, the reference point is usually the top left. So for you guys seeing me on the screen, it'll be around here, I believe. It's the top left corner. So every time I move, I increment on the x-axis, I'm actually going towards the right. And every time I increment on the y-axis, interestingly, I'm always going down. So if I were to say increment by a minus value, that means I'm actually going up. And if I'm, oh sorry, no, if I'm decrementing by a minus value, I'm going up. And if I'm for the y axis, and if I'm incrementing the y value, I'm actually going down. So according to this logic, I actually set off to start my animation. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, yes, I actually use, if I go to the drawing routine, this goes on for a little while, and I'll explain why I didn't opt to use a loop, although it's probably possible to make a loop for this. But in my canvas, in my, sorry, my created animate um, resources, is actually, I created all these canvas bitmap op, um, objects, which actually hold the spiral at the end. I didn't opt to create the spiral via vector graphics, it's just literally a bitmap. And at every stage of the spiral animating, I drew it out on paint.net. And I just literally, frame by frame animated on the screen so to do that i had to load every bitmap which i could have done this via loop but again i was just doing things really quickly i could use naming conventions to access the index of the um, file and thus kind of really quickly load everything but i opted to just kind of do it procedurally just because of time i was trying to get this out as quick as possible and as you can see it's 10 frames indexed at 0 to 9 and over here um, we have the animated draw so the main thing that this does is that it controls the animation of the circle. So that Dreamcast ball, bouncy ball that goes on the screen. This animates it by changing its X and Y values. So every time this, is, this animated draw is called, you have um, via the argument E, which comes from the canvas animated draw event arcs. And if you're not too familiar with some of these terms, definitely check out my other video about how to draw bitmaps on the screen and that will give you a good reference to what some of these terminologies are you can access the drawing session and through drawing session 
you can access the fill circle, which is a method. And through this, you can overload your method in order to generate a circle on the screen based on the parameters given. And nothing really changes in this case, except for X and Y, which is the position of the ball bouncing. So you can kind of see as you follow with the logic that um, the draw function is just pumping out the frames but what the only thing that changes is the X and the Y position. And according to this logic, I actually make the ball bounce. And according to the timing, the ball will either ease in, go in a kind of regular manner, or it will ease out into another animation. So if I just scroll down, there's a little bit more of the looping logic. And that's literally it. It's a very simple concept. It's literally just changing the X and Y values and updating the frames accordingly and that's all i did really that was the that was the fundamental backbone of how this project works it's just that if i had a bit more time or if i gave myself a little bit more time there's a few loops i could have done to just kind of make this process a little bit more efficient but as you can see i'm also using the draw text method to write out the text and in order to make it sort of shake so when the letter comes up it kind of shakes a little bit so it, it sort of gives a smoothing effect so it's just not coming up and staying in the same place looking a little stiff what i did is that um i have a shake function somewhere which is actually here if i just go to the definition very quickly what this does is the same kind of logic as with the movement of the bouncy ball is that when i approach a certain range um of the letter float which is the y-axis so the height of the letter once i approach a certain range i would then actually opt for the letter to go down i would um, increment its y value to only decrement it back so it settles so it kind of goes down and it kind of goes up again so the letter will rise up shake down then rest back up so that's the logic i did for every letter of the dreamcast animation that you that you see on the visualization and that's literally it. That's literally how you make a simple animation with Win2D. You basically, uh, I'll see if I can go back to the other, um, to the other slide really quickly. Yes, so once you're familiar with the way that the methods work, you don't need to be too familiar with the actual innate logic of the threading itself, but you do get errors if you do get clashes. So it is, it is good to be so, sort of aware of what's going on with the threading itself. There was an interesting scenario when I actually tried to pass data between the UI thread and the game loop thread, which caused some complications because you can't directly access um, one thread from the other, or should I say, you can't directly access resources at runtime outside of the in initialization step from one thread to another. You can't just simply assign a value from the game thread to the UI thread just like that and it's done. There's a discrete way to go about that, which the Microsoft documentation, as far as I know, does go into, so you can do a little bit of research on that. But this brings us to the end of this little video. I just wanted to share with you guys my, li my little process of how I created the Dreamcast animation. Hope you found it somewhat educational. Feel free to, you know, stay in touch with the, vi with the content of this channel. My name is William Sidijima. I'm on LinkedIn. Feel free to send me a message. Hit me up on LinkedIn to talk all things tech. And I'll catch you for another video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.